Okay, spoilers and shit, alright. I'm finna be doing a Fruits Basket review. I watch this shit in dub because, you know, I normally prefer dubs when I'm watching romances. And it also has Psyche's voice actor for Kyo. So I just had to watch it because I like this dude's voice. Uh, this review is basically just gonna be about the characters because I for real don't give a shit about the story. Let me start off with the biggest L in the story. Everyone's parents. Yeah, you thought I was going to say Akito. I would get on her ass later. But I don't know why everyone's parents in this show are such L's. Like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Like, how is everyone's parents, besides like three people, like the worst human beings ever? How unlucky do you got to be to not only be cursed with the Zodiac shits, but you also got dog shit ass parents. You basically just fucked from birth. Like, let's be honest. The parents in this show go into three categories. Number one, using their kid for power. Number two, they're abusive. And number three, they are absent. Those motherfuckers are gone. And Yuki's mom fits into all three categories. Like, bitch, please pick one struggle. You do not get to be in all three categories. Like, she for real uses Yuki to get more status. She mentally abuses him. And then she just dips and leaves his dumb ass with Akito for years. Like, what the fuck is up with you? I'm not going to talk about anybody else's parents because this video will take too fucking long. And that's basically like everybody's trauma. They always got dog shit ass parents. And most of the time it's their moms. But I'm not done talking about abusive people. Because I still got to talk about Akito. Like for the first time watching an anime, I really don't give a shit about a character's backstory. Spoilers for Naruto, I guess. But that motherfucker Pain literally killed my favorite character, Jiraiya. And he destroyed the Leaf Village. And after everything was said and done, I'm like, damn. I can't even be mad at him. But for Akito, I don't give a shit. The thing that made her like this was because her mom was an L. Yeah, cool. Welcome to the fucking club. Because everyone else in the show has a fucking dog shit parent. And you're not special just because of that. She is such a piece of shit. And it's unforgivable. But guess what? Everyone in this show either forgave her or at least didn't care that much. Except, uh, like, one person, which was Rin. And she was like, uh, do y'all not remember what this bitch just did to us? Like, hello? Anyway, she just gets forgiven in the end and gets with Shigure. I really didn't care at that point. I just wanted the fucking show to end. Fuck that bitch. Also, who the fuck did she think she was fooling? Like, did anyone actually think Akito was a dude at any point? I immediately knew, as soon as I saw her, that that's a woman. Okay, I might as well talk about basically every character now um i'm gonna start with the big three toru kyo and yuki i'll try to make this shit quick okay so with toru she's nice she's very wholesome and when she's on the screen she just gives out some fire vibes you know she's just an amazing person and she's low-key like everyone's moms because everyone else's mom in this fucking show is trash so that's pretty cute and wholesome and and things of that nature yeah that's basically it i don't really know what else to say about her uh we got kyo next he got the cat spirit and that means he gets hoed the most out of everybody in the zodiac because the cat got hoed and that means he did um he just gets treated like shit for no reason i know everyone else does but like he gets it like the worst out of all the other zodiacs he's a tsundere which gets fucking annoying a lot of the times but he is one of my favorite characters and he has like a wall built up and i like how toru slowly brings down that wall and we get to see what he's really like without him being annoying. Um, there's one thing that I really don't get. It's like his true form thing where he like turns into some weird looking fucking, I don't even know, he looks like some alien. He don't even look like a cat at that point. I don't know what the fuck that was. Yeah, I was not expecting that, but he pretty cool, you know. He's kind of hot, too, I'm not gonna lie. And Yuki is the first Zodiac we meet, and he's probably my favorite character. I just love watching him slowly develop with Toru and how she helps him with all his trauma and things of that nature. Everyone in this show got trauma, but I think Yuki got it the worst. Like I already said, because of his bitch-ass mom, hated him. And she left him with Akito. I don't know who else, but I think maybe Kyo and Yuki probably got it the worst. Uh, I guess Shigure should be next. He's the dog spirit, and that shit fits him. Because after Akito cheated on him with, uh, what the fuck's his name? Kurino, he literally fucked her mom. <laughs> like, damn, bro. That shit had me dying, bro. As soon as I saw it. Like, holy shit. Bro, he should be called fucking Shigure Hendrix because this motherfucker is toxic as hell. And I don't know what the hell he, like, his whole entire goal was the whole show. I don't really give a fuck because he was pretty funny. Kagura is annoying as fuck. She is one of the Zodiacs and she just bothers Kyo all the time. Ask him to go out with her. And then when he denies her, she just beats the shit out of him and then dips for like a whole episode or like 
I don't know, a whole season, I fucking wish. She's annoying as hell. Like, damn, ho, you need to be arrested for domestic violence. Uh, Momichi, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, he got the rabbit spirit. Uh, he's pretty wholesome, and you really don't find out much about, like, his past uh, until, like, maybe, like, 12 more episodes later, which is actually very interesting because you don't really think that he got a dark past like everyone else, but, like, that shit fucked up, player. He got an L mom. Is that surprising? No, just count it add that shit to the other counter hatori is the dragon zodiac and he's surprisingly wholesome and normally doesn't take any bullshit i really like him but that stupid bitch akito fucked up his whole relationship with his fiance and destroyed his eye like that motherfucker can't see but he does have his hair down in front of one of his eyes and he looks hot as fuck i ain't gonna cap ayame i'm pretty sure that's how you say it is yuki's brother and actually he's probably my favorite character i don't know about his voice actor in japanese but in english he's funny as fuck him, Shiga Rays, and Hattori's friendship is so funny. I'm gonna just throw in, like, a clip of mine that I like. Indeed. I know you must be wondering, am I a bottom or am I a top? Well, I am a bottom all the way! And one of my favorite moments in the show was when Yuki and his mom were at the parent-teacher conferences. And his mom was being a bitch like normal. And then IMA comes in to save the day. This is one of my favorite clips from the whole show. If I'd known you'd turn out this way, I never would have given birth to you two. Leave her be. There's no talking to her when she gets like this. You'd only waste your breath. Ritsu was annoying as fuck. I just skipped the episode with him. Like, I, I didn't even give a fuck. He reminded me of Zenitsu, who I don't like from Demon Slayer, but like five times worse. So you can imagine that I'd skip that. Hiro was also annoying. I skipped the episode with him. But, I mean, because he was an annoying ass little kid. I haven't seen some motherfucker so entitled like that before. Like, homie, you need to go outside more. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? He was tell he was talking to Toru like she's some fucking dog. Like, bitch, if you don't get your stupid ass out of here before you get slapped up. Damn, I hate that kid. Uh, for like that one episode. But then like, you know, later on he like developed as a character and then he was pretty likable. But at the beginning, I didn't like him. Kisa is some little kid that wouldn't talk because she got bullied or some shit. Until she met Toru, and she basically became Toru's little kid, and that shit was cute as fuck. Kazuma is a W dad. I know you wouldn't think I would say W dad or W parent, but he is. Um, he's Kyo's adoptive father, and he's amazing. Machi, I really like her. Some people don't like her just because she ended up with Yuki, but like, come on now. That's such a fire relationship. I'll get into that later when I talk about the ships and things of that nature. Kurono, he's pretty cool, I guess, but like... He was the first person to have his curse broken, and he still stayed with Akito. He kind of an L because of that, but he did save Rin, so I guess he gets an excuse for this time. And speaking of Rin, uh, she a W. She spends most of her time trying to break the curse, uh, but she just kept getting hoed. Every single time she was doing something, she would just get hoed. It, it, like, I don't know how she kept going. Actually, I do. Because she was doing it for her man, Hatsuharu, and shit. I don't blame her, because damn, fuck, shit. This motherfucker's hot as fuck! Yeah, you thought I was gonna go a fucking romance review without simping. Hell no! This is basically a tradition at this point. He is so fucking hot! Like, goddamn! He got that Miyamura vibes with all them damn piercings and his hair is cool as fuck. His fits are always hard. It's like they just popped a fucking Viagra. That shit stays hard for four hours or more and that shit needs to go to the fucking hospital right now. He's just hot as fuck! But not only that, he don't fuck around most of the time. Like, when someone fucks with someone he likes, he don't mess around. My favorite episode in this show was season 3, episode 4, because Akito really thought she could talk down on him and his girl. And he just fucking hit her dumbass. Like, it was the most satisfying thing in the show. I think he, like, fucking slammed her dumbass on the wall. She thought nobody could touch her. Hell no. These hands are rated E for everyone. This motherfucker don't play around. And then after that happened, he just dipped. And then she's like, wait, come back. Man, fuck you. Okay. Let me just talk about the romances now because I don't want this shit to take too long. So let me start with the worst ships in the show and then, you know, to the best ones. And we're going to start off with Akito and Shigure. I like Shigure, but I fucking hate Akito. That's literally the only reason. Kurno and Uo, the age gap just weirds me out. Next is Kisa and Hiro. They down low because they just jits. I mean, like, what else you want me to say? Okay, I'm sorry, but I got to put Kyo and Toru here. I really like them together. I was rooting for them the whole fucking series. But, I don't know. I just don't like them as the next people on the list. And those are Yuki and Machi. Yes, that's right. I got them at number two. Um, because I only remember, like, six relationships. If there's more, just let me know. I don't fucking remember. Yuki and Machi. 
they only had like a season compared to everyone else who basically had the whole series. But as soon as Machi was introduced, I knew she would be perfect for Yuki. She kind of a baddie, and so was he. Like, she helped him break free from his curse. That's fire! And some of his trauma that he has. Like, when he used to be in the dark room with Akito, and she would just paint all the walls. I don't know why she did that, and I don't know, but that's a trigger for him. So, when he was getting shit in the closet for some student council bullshit, some paint fell on the wall, and then he started having flashbacks. But she helped him get over it, and speaking of her, her mom was an L. I mean, yeah, let's not be surprised at this point. She got a dog shit mom, and she was basically forced to be perfect by her mom because her mom wanted some bank. She fits into category one, but when she wasn't perfect enough, her mom literally just kicked her out. Like, who the fuck does that? How do you just kick out your kid for not being perfect? I don't understand. So that's like the reason why she doesn't like things that are perfect because it reminds her of that. It leads into one of my favorite scenes in this whole entire show. It's the chalk scene. And it was really short, but it was so fire. So basically there was a brand new box of chalk and that was going to make her freak out. Yuki slid his hand over, broke one. He didn't even make eye contact with her. She looked at him and I knew it was up from there. It was so smooth. Like, damn Yuki, I didn't know where you got this shit from. This shit was clean as fuck. Yuki got me feeling like he the best in the show with that shit. Okay, and then the last but not least, my favorite chip is Hatsuharu and Rin because they go to insane lengths for each other. She literally tried to break a curse for this dude. Who the fuck does that shit? And then Hatsuharu will literally throw hands with motherfuckers to get her. And yeah, they both hot as fuck, bro. I ain't gonna cap. Okay, I'm gonna stop now before I start simping again. But yeah, this show was an 8 out of 10. I like mostly everybody and when it's a slice of life like show like this was i think that's all that really matters so i recommend this shit if you fuck with shows like this see y'all next week I should play all